Hey, hey, and welcome back to Miss Kitty's Wild West Adventures. Top of the morning, me darling viewers. May the road rise up to meet ya, and may the wind be always at your back. And, oh, Molly, you're, you're back again. Why? Ah, sure. Didn't you mention last week that you were telling a couple stories of an Irishman? Well, this happens to be my speciality, so I came to lend my smarts to the stories. All right, Miss Molly. Well, you know, I could always use your assistance. Today, I'm gonna to tell you the story behind this photograph. Hold your horses, lassie. You don't want to be given out the secrets. Let your viewers have a chance to guess. You don't want to let the leprechaun out of the bag just yet. Go ahead and leave your comments down below. After all, they're magically delicious. Fair enough. Pause the video now and leave a comment down below. One, have you ever seen this photograph? And two, who do you think is the pharaoh dealer in this photograph? I'll wait. Welcome back. The photo in question was taken in 1903 by William Irwin. He titled the photo Orient Saloon in Bisbee, Arizona, Pharaoh Game in Full Swing. It soon became one of the most popular images in all the Wild West. So popular, in fact, that Cyrus Noble Whiskey even adopted it for use in their advertising campaigns. You may have seen a copy of this advertisement hanging in the Birdcage Theater in Tombstone, Arizona. What you might not know is that the men in this photo weren't actually playing Pharaoh. The photo is completely staged. Now, some people, including myself, believe that the man dealing pharaoh is Wyatt Earp. And some have even speculated that this man over here is Doc Holliday. However, neither is true. In fact, the pharaoh dealer is Irishman John Murphy. Murphy was born in Ireland in 1847, and by the 1880s he was living in Tucson, Arizona, where he ran a series of pharaoh tables. John Murphy, you say? That name does sound familiar, lassie. It's because last week I told you the story of fellow Irishman James Levy, who was gunned down in an ambush by three gunmen. One of them was John Murphy. See, it turns out that Levy and Murphy had a fallout over a game of pharaoh, and Levy challenged Murphy to a duel. Well, Murphy agreed to it and agreed to meet him the following day. But afterwards, he realized his skill was no match for Levy's, so he recruited his two friends, William Moyer and David Gibson, to help him out. And on June 5th, 1882, as Levy left his hotel room, the three men gunned him down. Immediately following the murder, all three men turned themselves in to the police, but a few months later, while awaiting trial, they all mysteriously escaped. Moyer was found rustling cattle up in Colorado, but Gibson and Murphy were found all the way out in California. They all stood trial eventually, but interestingly, only Moyer was convicted and he was sentenced to life at Yuma Territorial Prison. Now, as for Murphy, he wasn't convicted and he went back and he ran a few small time scams back in Arizona. He was knee-deep in gambling rackets, racketing the chips and dodging the law as quick as he could. If you're liking this video, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to subscribe to Miss Kitty's Wild West Adventures. Believe it or not, your subscription and your thumbs up really does help our channel and help the YouTube algorithm to reach more people. Thank you so much. Fast forward to 1903, when noted photographer William Irwin came to Arizona and wanted to portray the interior of Wild West, saloon and gambling life. And what he ended up capturing was John Murphy dealing Pharaoh, and it became one of the most iconic images of the Wild West. But like all good stories, Murphy's has to come to an end. And on March 27, 1926, he shuffled off his mortal coil and died. He is buried in an unmarked grave in Evergreen Cemetery in Tucson. Ah, sure, wasn't that a grand adventure, me hearties? But before we go, did you ask your viewers a question at the end of last video? What was it? Oh yes, James Levy, 
he is known to be the only what in the Wild West? Did you all figure it out? No? Well, James Levy is known to be the only Jewish gunfighter. Ah, yes, we claim Irish and he was Irish, but he was Jewish. He was the only Jewish gunfighter known in Wild West history. Thank you for participating. On with you. So let me know, did this surprise you in any way? Were you surprised that the photo was not Quiet Earp and Doc Holliday? Be sure to leave a comment down below. And since I mentioned Yuma Territorial Prison, let me know if you've ever been there or maybe it's on your bucket list. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Miss Kitty's Wild West Adventures, ding the bell for notifications, and if you have some friends that are also into Wild West crazy facts, be sure to share the video with them. In the meantime, Miss Molly and I will catch you on down the trail. Oh good, how that she's gone and done her little bizarre thing. Ah, from Miss Molly, I wanted to wish all of me viewers a very happy St. Patrick's Day. I hope your march is as lucky as me leprechaun. Catch you on down the shillelagh trail. Ah, good morning. Is she gone? She's not here just yet. I want to take a time from the bottom of Miss Molly's cold and wretched heart. We don't want to give out the answer. Wait, what? Let's have them drop. <laughs> ah, now hold on, lassie. Don't you want to give them a chair viewers a... Chair viewers? Ah, hold on, lassie. Don't you want your chew... Shit. Oh, we're still filming, okay. Okay, now that she's gone and done her little bizzer business, business, I wanted to take the time, while the camera's still rolling, to wish all my viewers out there a very happy St. Patrick's Day. And may the odds be ever in your favor. <laughs>